Um, the next thing is making sure you have the proper tools to ensure that the materials you have can be used um, and that they match the intent of the standards. Um, the, the issues a lot of times is you get all of these things that come your way and you're told I have to do, you have to cover this thing, that thing, you know, and and you go down the laundry list and you go, oh, what do I have to do that? And a lot of teachers right now are a little freaked out with the NGSS. Oh my gosh, we just spent so many thousands of dollars in our department buying certain materials. How do I make those where I can use them for the Common Core and NGSS? And most of the time, your materials you already have are perfectly usable. So whatever you have on hand, it's just a matter of sort of reconceptualizing. And I wanted to show you guys the equip rubrics that are used for evaluating the um, ELA content or the math content within lessons. Um, so you're, you guys are already sort of in your, um, in your grade level groups, first grade, middle school and high school, right? So, and you know what you pretty much covered in um, your brainstorming, on right? 31st. On the 31st, May 31st. I, there's a, you got a sheet that actually has all of your brainstorming points written down. It's, um, they've already got it. Yeah, I've already given them. It's called, it's, it's a staple copy called Unit Brainstorming. All right, and then um, what I'd like you to look at is the Equip Rubric for Lessons and Units, the Mathematics one, and the Literacy. They, they look like they're, they've got the uh, rubric on the front. They're just single pages. I just want to add another, <clears throat> sweet, another thought to what Janelle had said. You guys have many materials that are available to you. Many of you are 10 and 20 and maybe pushing 30 year teachers in the classroom and you've got some shelf that looks, you know, like some library there. And you probably have some favorites that you've used in the past. And your administration may or be, may not be saying nope. Don't use that, it's not aligned to the current framework, it's not aligned to what we're doing. One of the things we want to make sure that you walk out of this whole set of PD with is that I can indeed use those things that I've got on my shelf. I may have to do some work, I may have to add some stuff to it, I may have to prove to administrators that that does meet the framework and the standards and the particular skill sets that I'm doing in my class. But it's there. You know, you, you are able to make that kind of thing happen. So as we're talking through these skills in NGSS and Common Core and the environmental PD that you're going to be getting and those lesson sets that are there, everything was written before Common Core. Sure. Certainly everything was written before in GSS. Some of them will have some pieces that work well with those topic areas. Everything will have opportunities for you to look at those materials and say, I could add this exercise of really hunting for the evidence having my kids talk about where they saw the evidence that supported their claims. Okay, I can certainly look at using language arts skills in that piece that I'm doing, whether it's using proper vocabulary or researching something and, and writing about what I had, had found from a science topic point of view using those mathematical <coughs> skills, doing the modeling and the argumentation stuff that we're going to be talking about. So every book that you've got on your shelf, you can probably take off and say, yep, it was 1980. I really liked that thing that we used to do there. And I can 
pump this up to current day standards and best practices of what we really need to be doing. There might be some investment of your time. Okay, but it's, we're going to be working on that whole concept of what would I go through my laundry list, and we've got a list for you, to say, oh yeah, I could add that, and that one. And, nah, I won't do that one on this one, because I'm going to do it on my next lesson. Now, and everything doesn't have to have everything. But through your year, you have to build that set with your kids of what you're doing. So, so that's part of what we're doing with this, is think not just in terms of, oh, they showed me how to do it in this lesson. I know how to do it in this lesson. We're really looking at giving you a toolbox that can set you wild in everything that you've got on your shelf. Maybe some of the stuff that you've moved out of your school locker and is, is in one of those boxes at home because I don't use it anymore. But if they're, they're good things, go back to them and find some fun. And I do realize these talk about being specific for a math unit or a lesson or a literacy lesson or a unit. Um, for you guys who are strictly science people, you can look at those instructional supports on the third column in the assessment piece and see if those things integrate into your lesson. And if not, how can you change the lesson or modify it a little bit so you actually hit those pieces? So, um, and they have a part where it's a lesson at the top and then a unit or a longer um, lesson on the bottom of that column. So, um, just take a look at those um, in your groups and think about Think about the unit that you had started brainstorming about and um, figure out how you could modify what you started brainstorming or add to your brainstorm to figure out how you can add those pieces that you need to for the math and language arts.